Ladies and gents, welcome back to another Engineers podcast. Today I'm joined by Max Olovsky. Max is Director of Engineering at a company called Chili's, and Chili's are building the web infrastructure, or Web3 infrastructure, for sports and entertainment. We've got a couple of really interesting talking points today. Setting up blockchain ecosystems, building your own chain, and some of the engineering challenges that come with that. Um, the more companies that I feature on the podcast, especially into this year as well, we're talking about some subjects in the blockchain space and the AI space. So it's refreshing to get different ideas, different approaches, and Chili's and Max are no different. So Max, thanks for coming to join us. How are you? Uh, thank you very much, Elliot. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure. We always start with an intro. So if you can give us an intro into you, Max, your background, that will kick us off nicely. All right. Well, uh, as you said, my name is Max. Uh, I live in a uh, sunny island of Malta. That's in Europe, for people who don't know, is the island between Sicily and Africa but it's still EU. Uh, and um, I've been living here for the last, uh, I think, 10 years. I moved here because of the work opportunities uh, as a um, front-end engineer. My uh, experience of engineering started like uh, way back, like uh, in total, it's like close to 20 years ago when uh, the front-end, back-end DevOps was not even a thing. It was just a software developer or web developer. And... Uh, yeah, uh, I was kind of like developing myself in all of those uh, different uh, kind of like environments and I tried them all and tried even freelance. And uh, so, yeah, been there, done a lot of stuff, tried different languages, tried different platforms. And uh, eventually I ended up in Malta working for the company called Chili's uh, in this weird, wor weird world of blockchain industry. And, uh, and I've been with Chili's at this point for six years. I started as a, a single developer. Uh, interestingly enough, it was not uh, nothing about blockchain initially. It was more kind of like esports entertain entertainment oriented. And then kind of like blockchain came into the, into the field. And we decided that it's a nice opportunity and a new technology. And, and that's how we kind of like started. And uh, this is where I started my growth period of, of, of becoming director of engineering. Love that. I can't wait to get a little bit more into Chili's. I want to touch on something there. Um, the business obviously found an opportunity to use blockchain. It would be great to understand you know, what that process, what that discovery actually looked like, because I think there have been times where and still times where businesses choose to use AI, they choose to use blockchains, and you're obviously a massively successful business. So it would be great to understand that use case as to introducing blockchain into the business. All right. Well, I won't go like in the bits and bobs of, of, of literally every decision making and why it was made, but kind of like the the, the main concept, the main idea that kind of like got like sold for us uh, to join this endeavor with uh, our CEO, Alex Dreyfus, is that um, there are, there is this new technology that is created uh, on an idea of where you can validate the transactions on, on the open source idea. And uh, it's kind of like open, it's there, it's on the chain, and you can actually have a look at it at any point in time and, and see where the transaction was was made, by who, well, without the name, but uh, because obviously there's cryptography involved. But um, the idea was uh, that there is a massive amount of fans and they are based all around the world and they communicate with their favorite club, uh, through social network and uh, nowadays it's no secret that social network uh, networks actually um, uh, they've been 
not, not kind of like overtaken, but there is a lot of bots and a lot of uh, not a real human interaction uh, is happening on the platforms. And the same happening with the votes. Uh, so when the platform, or rather the team on the platform ask for opinion from the fans, bots can just go and overpopulate the voting to however they see fit. And even the same for the team can be said true. They can like, okay, we're going to place a vote, but then we're going to skew the numbers towards what we want them to be. And uh, I'm not calling anyone a fraud or anything, but just kind of like uh, that, that, that there is no, uh, you don't know if it's true or not. And blockchain actually provided this uh, opportunity to be open, to be transparent, to be visible. So you cannot just go and modify the value like on the simple database. And that was the initial concept. So what can we do for the fans and the clubs to have this more, more not, not like if, if not intimate, but more close kind of like opportunity to discuss and and and, and kind of make a decision which are not it cannot be faked by someone go and deciding that no I don't like this vote I'm going to delete it or I'm going to skew the numbers towards what I need so that was kind of like the initial pitch why the chilies started to exist and how we decided to use uh, this technology. Obviously, then it became like bigger and bigger and bigger. Then NFT came into place and more technology and blockchain even went through multiple stages of uh, uh, evolution, if we can call it that way, because obviously everything started with the Bitcoin, then Bitcoin became too expensive. Then the multiple different approaches started to kick in because the mining of the data became too expensive and, and the rest is history. That's really been an evolution. Before we get to some of this stuff, I'd love to understand at its core, who are Chili's? You know, what what are Chili's mission? Well, at this point, Chili's mission evolved and it became bigger than it used to. Initially, the whole idea was let's bring this transparency, let's bring a platform to the clubs as a business side of things and to the fans as a customers and and, and kind of like the community of those clubs, let's try to build a platform where it would make sense for them to have those interactions. To uh, let's, let's try to bring engagement. Let's try to make it fun for them. And let's try to bring something tangible to the crypto world. Because a lot of the cryptos, and at some point I remember it was 6,000 of them, of different coins, different cryptos, but all of them were like the same. So they had some crazy ideas. But there was nothing tangible where you can actually use uh, those like crypto coins or tokens, and uh, that was kind of like the initial idea that we uh, that we we're trying to uh, bring into the world because we always looked at the utility. What what can we give rather than just crypto that exists? What can we bring to the to both um, clubs, sport clubs in general, sport clubs, not only football clubs, and to the fans? How can they use it? What what what's uh, what what's opportunities are there? And uh, kind of like we brought this idea of that there is a, a crypto token or cryptocurrency token which is called Chili's that is standing on top of uh, like as a layer, and then there are fan tokens for for the football clubs that can, that can be created on this Chili's chain. And uh, it, it's uh, before it was interconnected. Now they're a little bit more independent since we built our own chain, layer one chain. Uh, and uh, we kind of like created this uh, interaction successfully. Um, obviously, then 2023 or 2022, 2023 happened and crypto winter and all this stuff. But, uh, but we had this opportunity for the fans to come in, participate in the voting of the club, uh, had an opportunity to uh, win uh, uh, tickets for the club's games, uh, football club's game in this case, or for American soccer uh, team's um, uh, tickets of, of different level. Uh, had an opportunity to speak with the, uh, with the players. Uh, at some point, I remember there was even uh, when you could have a, a, a lunch or a dinner with a player or someone from the team. So, so there was like a lot of those opportunities for the fans to kind of like interact and, and, and part, 
let's say, participate in life of the club that they are a fan of. Because we had a lot of fans that are living somewhere on the other side of the, of the world, like in Korea or, I don't know, Japan. And they are a huge fans of European football. So they, they are fans of uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Barcelona, Juventus, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, so that's what Chile is essentially try to uh, create initially. After 20, 2023, uh, we were in the background building uh, our own Chile's chain. And uh, at the beginning of this year, it, uh, well, more closer to Q2, it actually came out live. And now, rather than being just a product for the customers, we're also trying uh, to allow other developers and other sport clubs and sport companies to come in and develop uh, their products or their projects on the blockchain using the Chile's chain, which already have uh, a huge amount of fans uh, with their fan tokens, with their NFTs, with their coins uh, on the chain. So now we're trying to uh, be kind of like in those two branches uh, and, and work towards uh, different camps, but essentially uh, our goal is the same. The Chile's chain must provide some sort of utility or some sort of interaction engagement towards the fans, towards the, the, the sport fans. That's it. It's the utility, it's the value that you can create for your customer on top of the technology. I think we've got two really interesting talking points, you know, building your blockchain ecosystem, building your own chain. We're here talking about Chili's chain, the release in Q2. Let's touch on that. Help us understand what level of work, what level of detail, what challenges come with building your own chain? Ooh. That's, that's a very good question, and uh, I don't know which side to approach it from, but um, there were a lot of challenges uh, because, uh, as I said, initially there was no like Chile's chain, like Chile's chain, like layer one blockchain existing. Initially, we uh, decided to go with the Ethereum chain because that's what uh, was the most flexible and uh, the, 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 the most if I can say advanced to use because a lot of other companies were using it. So, and obviously when other companies using it, you can uh, learn for them, exchange with the ideas, speak with other engineers. And there's kind of like this community of Ethereum developers that, that, that started that you can actually communicate. And uh, why we decided with Ethereum, um, or ra rather, I'm getting too ahead of myself. Uh, as a Chile's chain, we actually use what is known as EVM. And uh, EVM is uh, essentially a, a ch your own chain that is based on Ethereum code base. And uh, you can have, uh, uh, it, it's written on the different languages. There is like Golang, Rust, uh, and uh, I think one in C, C or C++, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, kind of like we knew that in the future, if we want to build our own chain, we can. So that's why uh, initially uh, the biggest challenge of course was the, uh, the the skill the skill of engineers because it was such a new technology uh, you need to learn very fast and obviously with every learning uh, kind of like path you have some bumps uh, that you're gonna get on the road and uh, you're making mistakes and uh, uh, that that's why kind of like the the, the the first and main challenging point was to train engineers to find those engineers that are excited about technology. Because even nowadays, uh, when you speak with the engineers, they are kind of like, no, oh, no, I'm fine with my Java or like, uh, I don't know, PHP or .NET, and I'm going to be coding on that and not touch anything else. And I don't care about the blockchain technology and Web3. Uh, so obviously this is like the huge challenge of actually finding those engineers. Um, and, and, and then uh, afterwards, uh, how to scale it, how to build it. Uh, how does it work? Where to gain knowledge? Uh, uh, because at its inception point in 2015, 16, 17, there was not a lot of people that were capable of just joining you and immediately starting building something uh, insane of a, of a huge corporate level, let's say. Yeah. 
it's that knowledge gathering part, right? That I find really interesting that I wouldn't see taking a gamble. Um, there's obviously a support system there. Um, there's an ecosystem that sits inside of EVM where people know how to solve problems. But I think if you can leverage the technology in the right way and you can find the right people to build on the EVM, then you've got to go for it. So technology choice and knowledge gain were maybe some challenges. Yes, 100%. And uh, our first uh, blockchain engineers were the uh, very smart guys, very, very kind of like uh, talented, uh, but their um, previous experience in the past were focused more of a, on a JavaScript oriented ecosystem and that both front end and back end. Uh, so that's why uh, when we decided to take this opportunity to work with the blockchain, uh, we in fact decided to use uh, Solidity uh it's uh because it's kind of like more based on the um on a javascript uh, syntax uh and uh kind of like that's how it's all started so uh, it allowed us to very fast enter kind of like this uh, this possibility of work with a blockchain by not learning it completely from scratch because the syntax was uh, to a degree similar yeah and throughout your experience of building your own chain, what would you change or do differently if you had to go and do that again? Oof. <laughs> um, if possible, I would, to be honest, I would invest even more into the people because in the end of the day, people are the one that building it. And I, uh, the only thing that I can say um, that definitely mistake on my part as well as someone who have been kind of head of engineering and director of engineering in Chile is not pushing it much sooner and much stronger. Uh, develop more skill because that would allow us uh, not only from the perspective of to deliver more product towards the customer or other developers, but also the more people you have, the more skill you have, the more even communication within your company you have about how can you approach differently uh, this technical limitation or this technical challenge or that. Uh, and uh, we had for a very, very long time, a limited amount of uh, blockchain engineers. And that's definitely something that I would suggest if you have as very optimistic uh, kind of like vision of what blockchain can become and what you can build in it, Definitely invest in people and look for, for, for a good engineering and don't shy away from getting even a little bit more because there is always going to be um, kind of like a better output if, if, if you have this talent within your, your pool of engineers. So this is definitely uh, my, my one kind of like uh, w one of the lessons that I can uh, de definitely share. And talk, talk to us a little bit about the accessibility to blockchain talent and what that actually looks like. And that probably would need to go a little bit more of a layer, layer further as in, do they have to be based in Malta or how is your team structured to actually attract talent? Uh, so in Europe, for some reason, uh, it's actually very challenging to find uh, a blockchain engineers. Um, and uh, a lot of them are coming either from US side of things or from Asia or Russia or uh, kind, of, kind of like more. So it's either Eastern side of things or Western side of things for, for, uh, for EU or like Europe in particular. Uh, so that was a little bit challenging. And that's why our uh, company definitely understood very fast that, uh, yes, we would like to be based in Europe, not necessarily in Malta, because Malta is a, is, is a relatively small island. So, but like in general in Europe. So that's why we expanded our uh, view um, outwards and try to find people. And we found very, very talented people uh, from all across the world. Uh, obviously, for um, 
US uh, engineers, it's very problematic to hire them when it comes to their salary expectations. Obviously, when you work for Fang and your salary is something of a multiple hundreds thousands uh, sa salary range, and in Europe we have much less so, and when you go Eastern, it's even less. So kind of like that, that's the biggest challenging point, even though the talent pool in US is very rich and there is a lot of talented people. Uh, but you need to have much bigger investment <laughs> in order to afford them. So, so that's why kind of like a lot of our people still reside like few of them in Europe, but then uh, all Eastern, uh, Middle East, India, and uh, Russia, and kind of like uh, area around Russia. So Montenegro, Georgia, Kazakhstan, and all of those countries, they have a lot of uh, talent pool. Uh, but it's still fine challenging because um, since blockchain is... Uh, not, not, I wouldn't call it any more new technology. Uh, there is still too much of enthusiasts that are working only by uh, using smart contracts, but never actually created the smart contracts or never actually developed the low level language of the chain itself. So yeah, it's always challenging. <laughs> Let's continue talking a little bit more about some of the engineering challenges on the EVM. So help me uncover some of those. Yeah. Uh, so kind of a more challenges that, uh, because obviously I mentioned, mentioned one about the people, but uh, uh, coding itself uh, obviously is a challenge because, uh, well, as we discussed already, the, 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 the skill set, you need to build it with time by coding. Uh, another one is uh, the peer-to-peer -peer network where nodes need to work together that's 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 another kind of like huge challenge uh, in a way uh, because what we're using is uh, what's called a proof of authority. It's when you have validators and they need to uh, run uh, the validator run the node for your chain to validate all of the transaction. And uh, obviously, since the blockchain is so disconnected from each other, you need sometimes to roll out uh, your kind of like updates. And that means that every validator needs to be updated manually by the validator itself who runs the node and hold it. And uh, that that's uh, one of the challenges, like to try to keep it, keep them in the loop and always communicate. There's really deep level nuanced coding that does go into this that you can't just come from a web two to a web three environment and just slot straight in is my understanding and feeling. Yeah, 100%. So one of the difference is when you're coding, uh, if we can call it the, the, the backend side or the smart contracts coding. So kind of like the idea is that you create a smart contract and you put it on the chain and it's there. Is that you kind of modify it, so it's not like oh, I'm I I found a bug. I'm just gonna roll out another fix, and that's it. And I'm gonna fix it immediately. So there are different way how you set it up and uh, how you deal with the with the bugs and changes. Uh, and uh, I don't want to go like into into complete depth, but um, I'm just trying how to explain it to a non blockchain guys, like how it essentially works. Um, that you can set up a layer of a contract that then communicates with other contracts. So when you notice that the other contract have a bug, you need to kill it. On this layer, you just connect to the different contract. And that's essentially, so this contract doesn't go away anywhere. It's still there. It's just, you never talk to it anymore. And you connect to a different thing. So essentially, it's a versioning of your contract on the chain that you just reconnect. Okay, instead of version one, I now need to connect to version two. Or there is uh, also, um, we never use it, but it's a smart contract self-destruct mechanism. And uh, I was trying to understand it, but it sounds a little bit scary. <laughs> so that's why we, we kind of like, we use this layer that communicates to different contracts and that's how you deal with it. But definitely the mindset to actually go and code on the blockchain is you need, you need to change. You need to understand that it's, uh, that it's different. And one another thing is when you create a code, 
it's there and it's open. And uh, if you create a smart contract on the EVM, like Ethereum, technically you can just you, you can see the code. You can just copy the code and like output it on a different EVM chain. And uh, there are many chains out there besides Chili's. Uh, there are tons of them uh, that you can uh, just just copy the code and 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 create it. That's why uh, you need to be mindful that yeah, it's it's going to be out there. It's out, it's going to be out there in the world, open open source essentially. Exactly. I was going to say it very much feels like a mindset shift when it comes to the differences in actually coding on the blockchain, very much like a mindset shift. From the challenges perspective, yes, it's also kind of like a lot of things that you need to think about, like how to set up infrastructure, how how to deal with the security, uh, the whole ecosystem. There are also like uh, bridges, uh, RPCs that are nodes that enable API uh, that that need to sync the test net, the main net, and so so there's so much things that goes into it, and all of that I would say was kind of like a challenge because uh, nobody can come in and tell you, okay, you just need to do it this way because you, th there's a lot of exploratory. Uh, mentality in, in, in the developing on the Web3 uh, kind of an ecosystem. You, you need to be definitely open-minded and, and, and you, need, you, you need to have this kind of like, yeah, like excitement about uh, finding new stuff and, and like be open-minded about it, yeah. Good. Talk to us a little bit about the direction of Chili's. The next six to 12 months, what does that look like for the business of what you can share with us. You know, we've spoken about the last couple of months and the changes that you've made. Let's speak, if we can, about some of the future and what you're building and working towards. Um, so we have, uh, at this point, what I can share is is two primary things is that we're working on. Obviously, in behind the scenes, we're working for on much more stuff. But our primary targets and goals is uh, still remaining our product socios.com, which is using our Chili's chain. And uh, this one is more focused towards the sport clubs and sport fans. And uh, it's a hub for for people to be able to come in and uh, have a utility for their token and have a possibility to have a proper interaction with their club and have some some sort of engagement and activity so kind of that's again that, that's this north star if if you will this never changed it's still at the epicenter of everything that it needs to bring value to the customer and then another thing that open up a possibility for us is actually chili's chain and become more uh more partners with other developers and kind of like develop develop with them and uh and kind of like show what what you can do on the chain uh, by showing okay here's socios you can create something similar or completely your own thing so kind of like it's uh, how how how's the saying go that the, the the world is your oyster <laughs> if I say it correctly so it's kind of like you go go ballistic go crazy but like at the epicenter just bring value to the customer bring value to the sport fans so we're not we're also not trying to be everywhere and 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 do everything we're kind of like we're trying to be a sport chain and kind of we're trying to stay on the course that it's all about the sports and 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 kind of like uh, your customer is the fans is, is is the sport fans yes so so kind of like that that's that's a second um second part of of chilies where we uh try to concentrate a lot right now and try to work with other developers by building those tools. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of uh, developer experience that are still, uh, if I say, kind of, if I'm allowed to say, like, in a way, I don't know if they're going to be happy, like, like, lacking. And that's, like, I'm me personally, as an engineer, uh, as someone who might be even interested to build something literally by myself on the, on the chain, uh, that, that's something that I want to see more. Better communication, better documentation, better tooling, like just in general, DevX, like the developer experience, 
uh, needs to improve a lot. And this is where we're putting a lot of our effort at the moment, uh, working working with the developers to allow to work together. Because uh, obviously, um, one thing that Web3 and, and why I like to work in this industry, one thing that Web3 uh, kind of have at the epicenter is thinking about the community and kind of working together working together towards a specific goal and Web3 allows it. And so we don't have this um, enclosed system that we're only going to give you piece off and, and then you only use what we give you or it's open source, but we're in total control of everything. No, it's a blockchain. Just do whatever and we'll support you as much as we can. We're also organizing hackathons uh, that... Uh, that uh, recently we had a hackathon done in Rio, uh, in Brazil. Uh, there are more hackathons in the plans. It's essentially for the people to come in, build MVP, or not even MVP, sorry, POC, and then uh, Chili's will sponsor your project in order for you to build it and kind of just build on, our, on, on, on the chain. And we're going to try to think of a way how to partner with us. So kind of like we're, we're very open, we're very enthusiastic about working with the developers. Love so. that. Strategically focusing on your community, thinking about the community generally, focusing on developer experience. Yeah. Love that. Honestly, it's been insightful. Last 30 minutes has been insightful, learning more about you, more about the different chains, some of your engineering challenges, but also the nuances, the, the nuances of why it's difficult to work in the blockchain. But I do think this will only continue to improve as the years go on. And more people that are interested in the space, the more, not necessarily commercialized, I think that's probably the wrong word, but the more widespread adoption is probably the better phrase that people use for it and develop different use cases for it the more knowledge people will get and start to introduce it. I do want to say a massive thanks for coming to join us from Sunny Malta and to share a little bit about what Chili's are doing. Um, any thoughts from your side? Anything you want to share? No, like, well, I, I just love how you put it in words and, and like, I agree with you, not commercialized, but actually like uh, the mass adoption. I just love how you put it. Like those words are just perfect. And when it comes to blockchain, we obviously only scratched like the, the top of the surface. Obviously, when you go into the depth, it's much bigger world out there. Uh, but I encourage all engineers, if you're not even in the blockchain, at least to try it. Because to me, it's something like uh, like the inception of internet 20 years, 20, 25 years ago, when the internet was wild. And, and that's what we see right now with the blockchain. And it can happen. So kind of like uh, more control for people <laughs> with, the, with the Web3 technologies. So no, that definitely. Thank you. So... Yeah, I like that. And uh, thank you very much, Elliot, for, 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 for this talk. It uh, was yeah. even insightful for me when I was speaking, like, oh, <laughs> it's... Uh, no, yeah, good. But... That's what it's all about. Uh, for everyone liking, listening, sharing, subscribing, that's massively important to this little ecosystem. It's not a blockchain ecosystem. It's an engineer's ecosystem. Um, and... You know, lastly, again, a massive thanks for coming to join us. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys and girls are building and best of luck to you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this episode. Uh, massively appreciate you listening and checking in with us. If you want to find out more about us and what we're doing, please check us out on social media. What we're trying to do at Engineers is build a community to drive knowledge, sharing and experiences. On Twitter, we can be found at engineers.io. It's no underscore. We've also got a website, which is engineers.io. These links will all be posted in the description. Any feedback and comments are massively appreciated. We're always looking to improve on where we can. Thanks, guys.